we are not taking any more time and we are going to jump straight into the program. So we did the beginning song. Yes, yes. All right, so now we're going to have um, Barrett, Gabriel Barrett to do the welcome for us. Gabriel? Yes, Ms. Press. All right, would you please do the welcome for us? Okay. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome. To church, our new church of ministry. Feel free to come. I welcome you, everyone. Happy Sabbath. All right. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Thanks. For welcome each and every one of us Amen. to our service. Amen. Amen. And next, um, we'll have one second. Next, we'll have our scripture reading with Emanuela Basil. Um, Emanuela Basil, would you please do the scripture reading for us? The scripture reading is taken from. Colossians 3, verse 10. We have put on a new man, which is renewed knowledge after its image created him, created, it is the image of him that created him. All right, thank you very much, um, Emanuela. Um, it says, we have put on a new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. And that is taken from Colossians 3, verses 10. Thanks again for sharing. Thank you very much. And so now um, we're moving next into um, our program. We're going to have an opening in with the... Hebron School Choir. Let's see how we can get that to work. I'm sorry. Never mind. Sorry. Mr. Grant to the rescue. One second. Thank 
Amen. Thank you very much, Prince. And now um, we will have um, Naomi's daughters to do the um, some song for us, some special song for us. The Virgin Sisters. Okay. Back in peace. All right, they should be coming on soon. You are muted, um, Naomi. Okay. Um, if you stay by somebody that you have another phone, you go away from the person because we are hearing the echo. All right. It looks like um, they are trying to um, come on. Um, we can, we can go. Yes, go ahead. Okay, boys and girls, gonna see our opening song. He is here. Um, Sister Mire, is this you? Somebody is making echoes. Okay, thank you. He is here. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. Is it me? There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a sweet in the atmosphere. Oh, the burdens we have carried in the sanctuary, I am here. God is here. To break the yoke, he is here. God is here to heal the hopeless heart and bless the broken. Oh, Okay, I don't know. You have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here. Il y a une Dans cette atmosphère, viens déposer le fardeau que tu portes dans le sanctuaire, car Dieu est là, il est là, il est là, Dieu est Casse le joug et portez tes loups fardeaux. Il est là, Dieu est là pour nous donner l'espoir et nous relever. Viens déposer le fardeau. Que tu 
praise the Lord, boys and girls. God is here. God is here, boys and girls. Let's be reverent and let's pay very close attention and praise him in the midst of a service. Amen. Thank you very much. And now we will have um, the announcement with um, Sir Mireille. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How was your week? Good. Good. I hope that each and every one of you had a blessed week where you were able to do all your assignments in school. No procrastination. Your parents were blessed because they went to work and they'd be able to come home safely. Let's praise God and give him praise for all the grace that he gave us because this is a grace that we not deserve but every day that we are alive i keep reminding you it's an extension of his grace Amen. because there's nothing that you do that can make you worthy of that blessing but god blessing is with you every morning so as we go in continue with the program I want you to be in your best behavior and mute yourself if you are not talking. And also when you join the, the, the breakout room for Sabbath school, if your name is not there, please make sure you have your name or your age so that we can put you in the appropriate Sabbath school lessons. May God bless you and welcome to Gwent and to the Hebron um uh, elementary school that you are with us may this day be, be a memory that will be in the book of heaven that all the children you god's children come together to praise him welcome once again god love you and i love you too happy sabbath Amen. now we're going go ahead um sister grant thank you very much thank you and welcome to each and every one of you and so right now we did miss our song with Kelly and Elena Virgin. And so we'll give them the opportunity to sing just before the spotlight. And so um, special song with Kelly and Elena Virgin. Amen. I'm just a woman. Help me believe what I can be in all that I am. Show me the stairway that I have to climb. Wait, show One day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Just give me the strength to do everything that I have to do. Yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you remember? When you walked upon them, Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now than dead. Cheating and stealing.
Amen. 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 One day at a time. And so, thank you so much. Thank you so much for blessing us, blessing us with this beautiful song. And um, and next, we know that it is time for spotlight on the mission. And so we're going to ask um, Abigail to please join us. Um, spotlight on the mission for Abigail, Abigail Pierre to join us for the mission. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. The title of our mission story today is Faithful Pathfinder. Nasia wanted to go on campouts and other outings in nature. She looked for an outdoor adventure club that she could join in her hometown of, Val of Vladivostok, Russia, but she couldn't find a club. Then her mother learned about Pathfinders. A group of Pathfinders organized a holiday party at the special needs school where mother worked, and she was impressed. I think this club is exactly what you have been looking for, mother told Nasia, called them. But Nasia was busy with school. Six months passed, and the Pathfinders returned to the school to hand out pizzas to the, to the children. Mother told them about Nasia, and they invited Nasia to come to their club, the only one in the city. Nasia enjoyed the Pathfinder meeting and happily accepted an invitation to go to Pathfinder summer camp. Finally, she would be able to go on a camp out. On the last day of the camp, a Sabbath, a woman was baptized in a river. Nasia was moved by the sight, and a desire swelled up in her to be baptized as well. When can I get baptized, she murmured, speaking to no one in particular as she watched the baptism. Her camp counselor was standing nearby and overheard. Which city are you from, she asked. I'm from Vladis. Vladis Volkstoke, Nasia said. The camp counselor, counselor told Nasia that she needed to speak to the Adventist pastor from Vladivostok and pointed to him. He was the man who had just baptized the woman. When can I get baptized, Nasia asked the pastor. Which city are you from, he asked. I'm from Vlad, Vladivostok, Nasia said. You're from Vladivostok, he exclaimed with surprise. There was only one church in Vladivostok, and he had never seen Nasia in church. He couldn't understand how this 13-year-old girl, who had never attended church, wanted to be baptized. Nasia ex explained how she had ended up at summer camp and now wanted to be baptized. You need to attend baptismal classes, the pastor said. It also would be nice if you attended church. After summer camp, Nasta had only one goal, to be baptized. She went to church every Sabbath, at 6 p.m. every Sabbath. She wanted to be to the, she went to the Pathfinder Club. Many Sabbaths, she ate lunch at the pastor's home. She became especially good friends with his elder daughter, Anna, who has, who was two years older. One Sabbath, Anna surprised her with a new Bible, and Nastya studied on her own. After six months, Nasta Nastya started a baptismal classes, and she finished them in two months. She was ready to be baptized. Nasta was baptized at the same summer camp where she had first wanted to be baptized. I found answers to all my questions in the Bible, and I am thankful to God, she said. Part of the 13th Sabbath offering three years ago helped construct a new building for Nastia's church in Vladivostok. Thank you for supporting the Adventist church in Vladivostok. What I learned is that God can 
you are muted. Abigail, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. What I learned from the story is that the Bible is the key to our life. It guides us so that we can take, so that we can make the right choices, and it helps us to live in Christ. Amen. Thank you, Abby. Amen. 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 Great stories. Again, we learned that um, the Pathfinder Club is a very, very important club that we need to become part of because it's not only just a club where you learn to do things that will allow you to survive in your society in case you are you find yourself um, in the wilderness or in case you find yourself something is happening at home and you have to find a way to either get out of the house or protect somebody. I mean, there's so much that you learn, but also it is a tool that is being used to bring people to Christ. And so we noticed that Nasia was able to join, not only wanting to join the club, but seeing somebody being baptized when she was at the camp, she also wanted to do the same. So boys and girls, when you do reach the age to join Pathfinder Club, some of you are right now in um, Adventurer, but stay with it because you not only learning the basic skills, but also you can also talk about God. You can bring people to God through the club. And then at the same time, you get to meet a lot of people around the world. Most of you are already in Pathfinder. So um, the next step um, for some of you who are an adventurer, the next step for you will be in Pathfinder. And then a lot of our Pathfinder have gotten baptized and just like um, uh, Nazia, you know, was, was going through baptismal class and, and so forth. Um, this is the stage where most of you get baptized. This is the stage where um, you take Christ as your personal savior. And there's, and there's so much, so much that, that you're learning, learning right, right now, now um, both both an adventure, adventure, and, and you are also learning your pathfinding that's going to help you further, further into, into your life with Christ. Okay, go okay. ahead, Sister Brent. Um, again, today the technology is really, really fighting with me, um, but we're going to be okay. So yes, um, please join. And one thing that I would like to let um, Sir Mireille know is that we need to get the Hebron school to join the Pathfinder Club. So we are making special invitation for Hebron school to join the Pathfinder Club, to join the um, Adventurer Club, because it's something that all children need, the information that is provided, all of you need it, and it's important for all of you to join this club. Very, well, very good. And yes. invitation to all, all the children between four and nine to, to this afternoon at 2 p.m. Very good. Um, the children can and all, we can let um, um, Sister Nila know so you can get the application. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. And so right now, we're going to ask um, the Naomi Virgin sisters to do another song for us just before we move into the division of classes. The Virgin Daughters, please come and bless us with another song before we move. Thank you. Finder Club, uh, you do have to have um, fill out an application, and from the application, when they do fill out the applications, um, Sir Mireille, where who do we give it to? Okay, okay. the application for the address, Jodel, collect them. Okay, so, so you so can you send the name to Jodel, right, and then, then she, she will send, send the application. The application. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. 
So we'll be in contact with Sister Jodel to get the application for any parents who are interested in joining Adventurer and Pathfinder Club. Thank you very much. It looks like the Naomi um, Virgin Sisters, they are ready. Thumbs up. All right, go ahead.
Amen. 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 All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, Virgin Sisters. That was beautiful. Um, right now, we are getting ready to do a lesson. Sister Mire, you want to tell the give direction yes. to the staff and to the church? Yes. Um, uh, staff, once you receive the, the invitation, please quickly join the class because today um, it's a little bit late, so we don't want to waste time. Children, if your name is not there, quickly on, uh, rename yourself or put your age so we can put you in the appropriate class. Please quickly, once you get the invitation, click on the bottom of your screen and then accept the invitation. Thank you. Happy study. verse is John chapter 13 verse 1. It says, He now showed them his love. The message for today's story is we praise Jesus for showing us his love. Who reminds you to wash your hands before you eat? A long time ago Jesus helped his friends wash before supper, but it wasn't their hands he was concerned about. Peter, Jesus said quietly, Take John with you and go into the city. Look for a man carrying a jar of water and ask him where we will eat the Passover supper this evening. Peter and John soon found the man Jesus had described. He showed them a large upper room where everything was ready, even a large jar of water and a basin and towel for washing their feet. But something was missing. Usually a servant washed everyone's feet before this special meal. But there was no servant. Each of Jesus' helpers looked forward to having his feet washed. Dusty roads and warm weather had made them very tired. Soon Jesus and the rest of the disciples came and sat down at the table. Peter decided he would not say anything about not having a servant, and the rest of Jesus' friends didn't mention it either. No one wanted to do the work of a servant. Then Jesus stood up. Without saying a word, he took off his coat. He wrapped a towel around his waist like an apron and poured some water into the basin. Then Jesus began to wash his friend's feet. Quietly, he moved from one to another. Most of the disciples were very embarrassed. They remained quiet. They knew Jesus was the Son of God. They knew that they should be washing his feet. But no one moved to help. When Jesus finished, he sat down. Do you understand why I washed your feet? He asked kindly. The disciples listened closely. I am your teacher, Jesus said. I am your Lord, and I am giving you an example of how to treat other people. Serve others. Help people. Act as I do. Mm -hmm. Jesus smiled as his disciples nodded their heads. They did understand, and they would always remember. Then Jesus broke some bread into pieces and gave some to each of his friends. He took the grape juice and passed it to everyone. He told them that the bread was to represent his body and the grape juice his blood. Take this and eat it, he said. Do this to remember me. Today, when you see people washing each other's feet and eating and drinking the special bread and juice in church, it is to remember Jesus' unselfish life and death on the cross. He wanted his disciples to treat others with love, as he did. And Jesus wants us to treat others with love, too. This podcast is pretty. Amen. Amen.
Did everyone yeah. see the video? Yes. Everyone watched the video, right? Yes. Do you have any questions? Did you learn anything new? Um, what about you, Sakari? What I got from the lesson was that Jesus sacrificed himself for us. And and he and he took some bread to represent and he used some items to represent what he really was going to be in the past. I see what you're saying. I'm gonna help you a bit. So the lesson was showing us that none of us, nor big, nor small, nor if we think we have more money than another, we're all equal and that we all can serve one another just as Jesus served his, his disciples. He sat there, he washed their feet, he gave them bread and he gave them wine. So that shows what are we? We're not any better than Jesus. That means we need to serve others. Then the lesson was also telling us that the bread that they were eating, what did it represent? Anyone? Does anyone know what the bread represented in the story? Yes, Sagar. Jesus' body. Amen. It represented Jesus' body. What about the wine slash grape juice? What did it represent? His blood. Yes. His blood. Amen. So they were practicing this fact. Do, do you guys know that we do this too? When we used to go to church in the building and we would sit there, remember? We would sit there, I mean, not you guys, but the older people, those who are baptized, they would sit there, we would pray, we would eat the bread, say a few verses, sing, pray, and then we would drink the grape juice representing Jesus' blood. We do this so that we remember what God did for us. What did he do? What did he do that we are doing this for? Anyone? You guys don't know? No? Okay. So Jesus, he died on the cross for us to save us from sin. He sacrificed his whole life. He took all of our sins and he put it on himself so that me and you, all of us, so that we can live and so that we Right. 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 Can I keep going? Up, 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 right, 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 down, down. What letter do we have? A. So what is the, what is, what word do we have here? Faith. 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 So what did Jairus have in Jesus? He had faith. We all should have faith in him too. Yeah. Oh, okay. So where else should I go? Um, right. Right. Okay, what did Jesus say? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
Yes, I am the it's resurrection the and the life. Gravity? Where do we find Bible? that in the Bible? John 11, All righty. Good job, everyone. Thank you for participating. I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to study a lesson. Next week will be lesson 11. Have a wonderful and enjoy the rest of the program. You can take over, Sajidan. I know. Um, mean about God? Okay. okay. About God. Say, what do you mean, Joshua? About God? Hi. Um, like church to me is like you can have your own. You can have your own church by like just like reading the Bible and learning about it. Mm -hmm. So it's not. You don't have to be in some big fancy place. No, it can just be you on your couch reading the Bible, spending time with God. And that is, that is exactly the point I wanted to make, because we see that, you know, before the pandemic, we were so used to going to church, you know, going to the building, you know, wearing our nice clothes. But the pandemic hit, unfortunately, and we had to be home to do it. But what we still haven't we still been able to have to praise God? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It shows us that the building is nothing. It's who we are. It's what's in our heart. And the praise that we give him, that's the true church. Do you guys agree? Yes. So that means that wherever you are, you can always have church. Wherever you are, you don't have to worry, oh, you know, it's Sabbath. I'm not able to go to a church. Just like Joshua said, you can go to the park. You sit down, you sing, you pray, you read your Bible, and you're communing with God right then and there. So you don't need the physical building to have church. So I want you guys to remember that wherever you are, you can always praise God. Wherever you are, you can always pray. You can have church. You can do whatever because God lives in our hearts. Right? Okay. So now back to the story. So now, like I said, if we didn't have, like when you had the parade, if, you know, the people came and they put the stuff down and, um, and this is what he was saying. This is most important. Now, he was saying that rather than the people give compliments, why did he appreciate the way the people were with him? What were they giving to him? Showing that, I mean, I think that Jesus was, um, he appreciated them because they were showing him honor and like, they were showing that they highly respected him. Yes. And, um, yeah, that they highly respected him and that they really showed that they would actually receive him as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have a take or want to um, add to what Abigail said? I agree with Abigail because God doesn't really want like money and stuff like that. All he wants is your honor, your praise, and just for you to like worship that's all you guys about. are so on point today i love it that's exactly the point god is not asking for us like in god wants our praise he just wants our love and that's more than enough for him you know even though know some people but can you put yourself on your sweetheart Thank you, baby. Even though, yes, you know, it's good, you know, to support the cause, to support the church, but in love and adoration, all God wants is our praise. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't want all this fanfare, whatever. All he wants us to acknowledge is that he is Lord. He wants us to acknowledge that we love him and that we accept him as our savior. Isn't that amazing? So, you know, so it doesn't matter if somebody, you know, doesn't have a lot of money or they can't put a lot of money in the collection plate. God isn't looking at that. He's looking at what? What is God looking at? Your heart. Exactly, Stacey. He's looking at your heart. So in everything that we do, just remember, if we remember that God is only looking for our praise, and if we can remember that the church is only a physical building and God lives in our heart every day, and we pray to him and we worship him every day, isn't that the most amazing thing? So, and, th and I say this to tell you guys, because pretty soon school may be opening up and you guys may have to be going back to the physical building. I want you guys to remember wherever you are, always keep a prayer in your heart. Always talk to God because you don't need to be on your knees to pray to him. You can sit down quietly and you talk to God and say, God, 
what's going on? Let's have a conversation. You understand? Right, Stacy? You know, you can talk to, because God is your friend and you talk to God, you know, as your friend, not everything you would say, you know, but you talk to God like your friend and you let him know what's going on with you. And even though 5 million people are praying, he hears 5 million people. So don't think that, oh, God isn't going to hear my prayer. He's not going to listen to me. He hears you. He loves you. And he's there for you. So remember, the church is just a physical building. The church is in your heart. God lives in your heart. Anybody has anything they want to share or add to the story today? You on mute, Stacey, if you're talking. Yeah, so like, I remember um, I used to do that. I used to say, there's like so many people praying to God. He might not even hear me. <laughs> and like, even... And um, I went to church the next day since it was Saturday. And the pastor always told me, no matter how many times you pray, God will always listen to you, no matter what. Absolutely. You could you could be whatever, he will always listen to you. Amen, amen. That's so true. And everybody's prayer is special. Don't think that one person's is, um, prayer is more important than another person's prayer. It's not. God loves us, each and every one of us, just the same. So all our prayers are important. So whatever you have, whatever issue, whatever problem, whether it be big or small, even if it's something that you lost, I'm going to give you guys an example. I was in high school one time. And um, we were doing this fundraising thing. And unfortunately, the money that I had raised, it got stolen. So now I had to get this money back. And I was broke, high school, I wasn't working. So I'm like, oh my goodness, everybody I asked, they didn't have it. But I gave up. So that I said, you know what? This is one last person, a friend of mine. Let me ask her. And I think the exact number I needed was $42. And I didn't want to ask her. Something just told me, just ask her. So I went to her, I'm like, oh. So-and-so, you wouldn't happen to have $42, would you? And she perked up. She said, yeah, I have exactly $42. When I tell you the shock in my face, because I had prayed to God, you know, even though I was discouraged, I said, God, what am, what am I going to do? But he came through. And when you least expect it, when you're discouraged, he will always, always, always come through for you. So don't forget, whatever's going on, you pray, keep Jesus in your heart. All right, guys? All right. So I know... Time is up, or I, I and me can have access to the throne of grace. And today he is not dead, he's alive, he's in heaven, he's interceding for you and me. So it is for us to keep our business together, to follow him and pray every day to give him praise and glory. Because one day he will no longer come as the, the, the sacrificed lamb, but he will come as the king of king and lord of lord. And that day he will judge all the wicked people, all the, angel, the bad angels and the bad people. So it is our business that we do not partake with the bad people. So when he comes, we can be saved and be with him forever. Okay? All right. The lesson finished. We're going back into the men room, okay? You can uh, uh, click on your screen and go back to the men room, okay?
She's frozen. Yeah. So we're going to sing this song together in Christ alone. He is my hope. He is my strength. He is everything for us, boys and girls. Okay, so let's sing it together. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest droughts and storm. What heights of love, what depth of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in hopeless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, spawned by the one he came to save, till on the cross, as Jesus died, the world was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ i live there in the ground his body laid light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stood in victory since curse had lost his grip on me for i am his and he is mine Brought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life first cry to final breath. Jesus command my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man could ever block me from his hand till he returned. Oh, call me home here in the power of Christ. I stand. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, now we will have um, the intercessory prayer with um, Miss Lee Jack. So we'll have the intercessory prayer with Lee Jack. And so we will ask that we sing the song, the prayer song before we get on. Go ahead, Miss Lapierre. <laughs> It's, it's not, not, my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the 
standing in the need of prayer. Amen. Amen. We ask everyone, if you can, just kneel down. Let's, so let's pray. Okay. Eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we praise you today in all ways. We thank you for being God. Father God, we ask you for forgiveness for all the negative and harmful words that we have spoken to ourselves and others. Lord, we come to you. We bring our burdens to you, Lord. We know you will hear all our prayers, all the prayer requests that your children will present to you today. We ask you, we know you will intercede for them. Thank you, Jesus, that you have, that you live here at one of us. You know what it is like to be a child and to feel everything that children feel. As your words say, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for such belong the kingdoms of heaven. Saint Saint, notre Dieu, notre avocat, nous venons devant au matin, à midi, nous venons présenter les problèmes devant le Seigneur. Nous disons merci de ce que nous avons l'opportunité chaque sabbat que nous réunions avec Timon dans Zoom pour nous prier, pour nous louer, pour nous voir gloire. C'est vous-même celle qui mérite, Seigneur. L'éternel, mes problèmes devant, vous tendez, yo, cher Seigneur. Vous avez intercédé pour nous. Papa, ou connaît yo, moi pas connaît yo. Nous chaque là, nous avons problème différent. Même connaît l'éternel, pas gagné qui l'eau pour chez Seigneur. Ou dit, vini que vini je nous. Si nous frappe, ou va ouvrir pour nous. Et nous, si nous demandons que nous va recevoir chez Seigneur. Mais nous vini là, que tout nous mon chez Seigneur. Nous le vêtons, nous devons chez Seigneur, papa. Mando va avec, nous protéger, nous garder, nous dans l'école, nous avons tout ça que nous avons fait chez Seigneur. Tu vas prendre pas dans la vie, l'éternel. Pendant que dans l'école, là, chez Seigneur, moi, je suis un jour capable de couvrir, couvrir avec moto de grâce, ou va couvrir avec chile, Seigneur, l'éternel. Parce que nous vivons dans un moment de pandémie, chez Seigneur. Maladie qu'on a envahi le monde, chez Seigneur. Mais l'éternel, nous connaissons là, de pour parmi nous, nous ne pas rien pour nous perdre, chez Seigneur, l'éternel. Même les problèmes, ils ont dû. Bah, ils ont difficile, cher Seigneur. Fait que nous capables de faire mal ou même, cher Seigneur, l'éternel. Nous m'ont dit la foi, cher Seigneur. Pas non foi, Père Saint, l'éternel. Même Jean avec Abraham, cher Seigneur. Même Jean avec Pierre, l'éternel. Je te gagne la foi, non ou même, cher Seigneur. Fais ça pour nous, cher Seigneur. Pas, même ceux que nous voulons tomber, cher Seigneur, on va prendre mes noms. L'éternel, même si vous l'avez dû, cher Seigneur, qu'on va aider nous faire l'éternel. Pas nous la foi. Fait que nous sommes capables d'être attachés à nous même l'éternel avec parole ou cher Seigneur, pour nous étudier parole chaque jour et que nous sommes capables de partager avec nous qui pour autant de cher Seigneur. Fait que lumière est capable d'éclairer nous, nous, cher Seigneur, que les nous, les nous, les nous, pour nous, pour que nous, c'est petit Jésus, cher Seigneur, que nous chaille pour le monde. Fais ça pour nous, cher Seigneur, avec nos personnes. Bénis-nous chaque qui l'a, chaque grand monde qui l'a. Tout ce staff, cher Seigneur, nous le voulons devant, cher Seigneur, papa. Nous le voulons expliquer à mon qui parle pour tes paroles, la personne. On le veut ça que l'a dit, cher Seigneur, va sortir de vous directement, que l'éternel. On va mettre le mot dans la bouche de l'éternel. Bénis-nous, papa, nous. Bénis, foyer nous. Malade, yo, personne. Visitez, yo, côté, yo, yé, cher Seigneur. Allez, posez mes sous, yo, et que on va guérir, yo, papa. Protège, garde nous guide nous nous te remercions. Nous pas bon Seigneur, nous pas digne, mais c'est pas ton petit tout. Seigneur, Jésus Christ qui veut qui règne sur les siècles des siècles. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, yes. um, Sir Louis Jacques. And um, right now we're continuing with the program. And we are going to have the scripture reading. Um, scripture reading is taken from Genesis 1, verses 26 to 27. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. And it says, one second.
All right, and it says, let us make men in our image after our likeness. Um, so God created men in his own image. And so this is um, what we will, the speaker for today, will be talking about um, God creating men in his own image. And following our speaker, we're going to have, um, after the scripture reading, we'll have, um, sorry, a special song um, right now with Amaris Augustin. And then um, we will let you know that Mr. Grant, who's going to sing for us, he is a man of God. He's an educator, a former principal. Um, currently, he is at the Bronx um, Bronx Academy School in Manhattan. I mean, yes, he's in the Bronx. And um, so he care a lot about um, the students. He has been um, working with them for many, many, many years. And not only he work with them, but he makes sure that he stay in contact with them, ensuring that they are okay, following them all the way up to college and even after college, giving them advice, you know, how to, how to survive after school, you know, what to do, how to make it happen. So he is truly a man of God. He loves children. He loves people. He'll go out of his way to ensure that everybody is okay and everybody's needs are met. And so this is the man that's going to talk to you about what it is like to be Christ-like. And he exemplified that in, on his day-to-day -day, uh, movement. So after you hear Miss Amaris, the voice that you're going to hear is um, Maurice Grant, who will bless us. Um, with a uh, sermonette today. And so now we'll open the floor for Ms. Amaris to sing for us. Hello everyone. The song I'll be singing today is called You Say by Lauren Diagonal. Fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure love Am I more than just the sum of every heart? And every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know Ooh, you say I love And I can't feel a thing You say I am strong When I What you say to me? Oh, I 
this song amen. Amen. amen amen and now um we are ready to hear the word from maurice and so please give your undivided attention if your mom dad or not with you get them to come in and participate and let us enjoy the word of god with maurice grant amen Good afternoon, everybody. In particular, of course, our boys and girls, and happy Sabbath. Um, good morning. Well, no, good afternoon. Good afternoon to our wonderful parents, uh, to our teachers. And uh, it's just a blessing to be here on this Sabbath day. Amen. All right. Now, I was told that the, 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 the title or the theme of the presentation or the, the talk for today is in his likeness. And so I prepared something that I think will, um, I think it will remind us if we have forgot. And for those of us who probably, I don't know, might not know, then it will inform us as to who we are. So in his likeness. And before we start, guys, let us have a little word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you have made it possible for all of us to be here this morning. I'm thankful, Lord, that you have given each of us this opportunity and for me to be your mouthpiece today. I pray that you will speak through me and that your words will encourage our boys and girls and even our adults, Lord, to be just like you as you have created us. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'm I, so this is really for our boys and girls, but we'd like our parents and our adults to enjoy it as well. And so I thought about this, and, and um, as as I as I was thinking about what I'd like to share with my boys and girls this morning, I said, well, if we are thinking that we are created in God's image then I think um, it would be nice if we really saw, as we contemplate the, the verse, Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27, and God said, let us make humans in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humans in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. And God did a wonderful thing when he created us in his image. And I like what he said also after he created man. He said, and it is very good. My creation is very good. And I'm so thankful that the fact that we are created in God's image, it means that we are the best. We're the best of his creation. 
And I tell my students every single day, I affirm to them that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. And if you are, then you're the best. And so the question might be, well, what is affirmation? What does the word affirmation mean? And, um, and I, I decided that I'd give this definition, and this is from dictionary.com. This is from the internet. It says something that is affirmed or a statement or a proposition that is declared to be true. So the truth is that because you are made in God's image, It seems that you are muted. Having connection problem. Going to let the devil spoil our praise on Jesus. All right. Amen. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're Amen. not. All right. So one of the things that I wanted to do, though, and and before I I gave the definition of what an image is, I want to know if anybody, if any of my little boys and girls, can tell me what they think an image is. What do you think an image is? When someone says, you are made in the image of God, what do you think that means? Somebody. Mm -hmm. say, that, say that again. Like, like you would see... And it's description. Okay. All right. Uh huh. Or. Or a representation of a person. The representation in the form of a person. All right, I like that. Anybody else? What do you think an image is? A picture. A picture. All right, and that's and that's a very good answer. As a matter of fact, we had all the answers that we got just now are awesome answers, very good answers, because the dictionary says a physical an image is like a physical likeness or representation of a person, animal or thing, um, whether it's photographed, painted, sculptured, or otherwise made visible. So when someone takes a picture of you, what you see in the picture is the image. An image of you, the original. And here we see this this artist who's making a painting, a painting of this lady, and he's trying to make it the exact replica of who she is. And I'm thinking that if we're made in the image of God, it means that we should represent who he is. So what does it mean for us to be made in God's image? Well, it tells us here that it means that when God looks at us, he wants to see himself. He wants us to be like his mirror so that when someone looks at us they should be thinking okay i think that's how god is i want to be just like that person so i can be like god so now when we look in the mirror we see god don't we or we should at least so when god looks at us he wants to see himself in us if we are reflecting god's image well some of you might ask a question but God doesn't have a face or a body. He's a spirit. So how can God see himself when he looks at us? Well, God wants to see himself in how we behave. If we love other people and do the right things, then we'll be acting like God. And God will see himself in our actions. Now, if you pay close attention to this picture here, you'll see the person sitting on the bank. And this is a reflection of the person. But does this image look exactly like this person here? No. no, no, it does well, not. Right, right. What else do you see? The color of the clothes, they're different. Um, no. There are other characteristics that are different as well. So that tells us that something is not right. The person might be doing something that is not a clear representation of who the original person is. And so that, that, that image, that reflection, is reflecting the truth of what is actually happening. So when people look at you, they should see God or Jesus in you. Um, God wants to look at us and see that we're acting like him. Then he'll say, yes, I can see myself in Annabelle, Abigail, Zachary, Isaiah, and Amherst, just name a few of you. 
And it would be like God is looking in a mirror because we're acting just like he does. If you look at this video here, <laughs> So in that video, you just saw three children that were riding by this house. You saw a wallet that was found outside, just outside the gate or the driveway. And uh, they decided that they'd return it to the owner, who apparently had dropped it from his car. And they brought it up to the front of the house and placed it on his steps and out of the, out of the way of anyone who might be passing and who could see it. So they put it in a safe place so he could get back all his money. Now, that's how Jesus wants us to be. Jesus wants us to be kind and honest and, and good. And, um, and he wants us to represent him in our character every single day in every single way. So, of course, when we're at school, I sincerely hope that we're doing our very best to represent Jesus in how we treat our classmates, how we treat our teachers. Of course, we should be getting those grades up there. And I know that it's tough, guys. I know. I see it every single day in my students. Mr. Grant, do I have to open my camera? I am so tired. I'm in bed. But you know, Jesus still wants us to represent him very well. And as difficult as it is, we have to represent Jesus in our actions. So I've got a question for you today. Well, kind of a riddle. I'm going to name four things that God created, and I want you to tell me which one is most different from all the others. Okay? Here they are. So we're starting with a cow. We all know what a cow looks like. Yeah? Um, a lion. And some of you might have been to a zoo, and we know what a lion looks like. Then we have a hippopotamus, or a hippo. And we've seen those as well, sometimes, or some of us who have been visited the zoo, we have seen the hippo. And then, of course, last but not least, we have you. Now, which one is different from all the others? Well, of course, yes. Why? That's right. Because aside from all the others, this one aren't animals. Or it's, these are children. And they're humans, just like you. You who are made in the image of God. And that is a reminder of who we are and whose we are and why it is so important that we display God's traits and his character in everything that we do. Here's another question. What does it really mean to be human? Well, several things. It means many things. But I want us to look at one special thing today in particular, and that's in Genesis 5 verse 1, because it reminds us that to be human is to be made in the image of God. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. But what is in the likeness of God? When I look into the mirror, I see my likeness, my image. It's a reflection of me. To say that we are made in the image of God is to say that we reflect God. And how? In lots of ways. So as in this picture here, when you look in the mirror, yes, if you get up this morning, or you got up this morning, you looked in the mirror, you'd have seen your image in the mirror. But if you were to close your eyes and just imagine, if you were to look in the mirror, wouldn't you want to see God's image looking back at you? Or even if you weren't looking in the mirror, if you were going to do something that you were kind of questioning, is this the right thing to do? Do you know that question that we ask ourselves all the time? What would Jesus do? So if we were at school and uh, we see a classmate of ours or another schoolmate who might be not being so nice to our classmate or another student, it is okay to say, hey, you should be like Jesus. We should love, we should be kind, 
and we should be considerate and nice. That is how we express in so many ways how we can be like Jesus. For one thing, God made the world and put us as human beings in charge of taking care of it. And we, have, we all have special responsibilities for the world that the animals don't have. And God placed us above all of them. All of them. And I know that we have some boys and some girls who are not the nicest to animals. I, I have seen that. I'm quite sure you've seen that as well. Whether it's a dog or a cat or whatever the animal is. But, or a fly. But, well... Mrs. Grant says a fly. Well, um, I don't know that we would want a fly as a pet. Um, I, I think they're pests and that they belong elsewhere. But we should be kind to animals because God made us in charge of them. And if we're in his likeness and he wants us to, to be loving and kind and caring, then we're going to be nice to animals too. Okay? Um, and then secondly, we had the freedom to make many choices for ourselves. God gave people more intelligence and freedom of choice than he gave to any of the animals. And of course, that is why he gave you responsibility over these animals, because of how intelligent you are. And of course, a reminder that you're made in his image. And another way we are like God is in our emotions. We have feelings, so we can love, we can hate, um, and not that we're encouraged to hate. This is just reminding us that as humans who were born in sin because of Adam and Eve and the fall, then we sometimes have the tendency to want to not be so kind to others. So we tend to sort of have this hateful feeling. But then we can feel sorry for something we have done as well. We can be excited about something that's not going to happen until next week also. So all these are feelings that remind us of just how human we are. Humans also have a sense of right and wrong and a God-given conscience that bothers us when we do something that hurts someone else. As we see in this picture here, I'm thinking that there are two friends who are in the background there and they're not being nice to their friend. They're probably gossiping and saying things that are not nice. And guess what? You know what? The unfortunate thing is, and the sad thing is, sometimes we do the same things, even as adults. But God is saying, that is not nice. We should love our fellow men just as how God loves us. And that is a very, very important commandment. The most special way we are made in God's image is that we have spirits. We have spirits. Even after our bodies die, our spirits will live on because God takes our spirits when we die, and they go back to him in heaven. Now, because we are spiritual beings, God can have relationships with, with us, and we can respond to him. And one way that we do that is through prayer. And I sincerely hope, boys and girls, that every single day that when you wake up, you pray and you ask God to take you through today, in particular, even today on a Sabbath day, I prayed and said, Lord, thank you for making it this day and for making, making me be able to wake up on your Sabbath day. And, and, and it is something that we have to do every single day. Give God thanks for the life that he has given us. You know, sometimes, sometimes we, we pretend to do things and to be things. Like sometimes you wish you might, you might be an animal or even something else, another object. And um, if I could be any kind of animal, if you could be any kind of animal or anything at all, I mean, I don't know what it would be, anything. But you know, at the end of the day, I one thing, I think the one thing that all of us are thankful for and that we're happy for is that we're all humans. Because as a human being, then I am comforted in the fact that I am made in the very image of God. And each of you right at home, each boy and girl, each parent, each one is made in the image of God. And that's a very, very wonderful, wonderful fact. So by us reflecting God's image, others will be able to recognize him. We can use words to describe Jesus, but if others can see an image of him in us, they will be able to recognize him more easily because if someone does not see Jesus or do not, if someone does not know, 
if someone does not know who Jesus is, if they look at you and they see how you're treating others, then they might have an idea of who Jesus is and who they should be like. So it is so important then for us boys and girls to be exactly like Jesus in how we act as well. And our closing prayer, guys, boys and girls, I'd like for us to really, really um, hold dear in our hearts. And it's, Lord, thank you for making us to be just like you. Help us to act more like you every day so that you can see yourself in us. Amen. And so, boys and girls, as you go through today, I would like for each of you to have that prayer in your hearts and every day as well, as you wake up, as you go to school, when you're talking to your friends, when you're in class with your teachers, that you will remember that you're fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. And the icing on the cake is you are the best. Have a wonderful Sabbath, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What a message. We have learned so much today. Oh, it's so nice to know that we are made in God's image. Yeah. We are, yeah. We are just in his likeness. We are very special in the eyes of Amen. God. And that's so special to know that. Thank you so much, Brother Maurice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome, guys. You. Amen. Lovely Amen. Praise God. Okay. Thank you. Sister Maurice, Sister um, Brett. All right. Thank you very much. And just before we do the closing prayer with Isai Basil, we're going to listen to one song and then Mr. Basil will do the closing prayer for us. And we pray that the internet just is kind to us this time around. Be kind, be kind.
Amen. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing. Um, we praise God for his ever blessing and we praise him for the message that we got today. And boys and girls, um, be reminded that we are made in God likeness. Okay, so nous supposé fier de nous, right? Nous supposé fier de nous because we are made of somebody that is huge. Okay, all right, somebody who created this whole planet, and we look just like him. Okay, so we feel special today. And we, um, we are so grateful for the sermon. As we come to a close, um, boys and girls, be reminded that we have a have tour a at 3 o'clock. And please buy your, your a word, a word of prayer. Of prayer. Uh, uh, so yes, Isai Basil will, will play, pray for us to close. Thank you. Please, please buy your word of Amen. Thank you so much, Isai, for this Amen. wonderful prayer. Amen. Thank you so much for blessing Amen. our soul. And thanks so, everyone for joining. We really, really appreciate you all being here. And of course, um, Sabbath coming up again. So we'll be waiting for each and every one of you. So Ms. Lapierre, we open the floor for you. Thank you, Mr. Spread. For the for the Boys and girls, what do you think, Mr. Spread? We thank God. We thank God for and